My Dress Up Darling might have possibly graced us with the single best girl ever created. The cure for cancer. The theory of relativity. Hirohiko Araki's secret to aging. All of these trivial things pale in comparison to the biggest scientific breakthrough the modern world has seen as after years of trials and research, science may have well created the yes, perfect science. waifu. This is the best girl of best girls. The anime girl he tells you not to worry about. The final boss of waifus. Marin Kitagawa. A best girl so great, so clearly above the rest. I can't wait for her to not be nominated at the Anime Awards next year. After over 10 years since I laid eyes on this scissor-obsessed, crabs-infected psychopath, and two years since I saw Chizuru in the critically acclaimed, fan-favorite, harem romance anime- <laughs> NTR Dojin Renta Girlfriend. <laughs> I didn't think any girl could come along to rival them so quickly in my heart, but like Gautama Buddha in 500 BCE, I may have just attained spiritual awakening as basking in the mere presence of Marin Kitagawa has opened my third eye to possibly become my new favorite anime girl of all time. That is absolutely, unconditionally, without a shadow of a doubt, not because she reminds me of my fiance, hey guys! but because she reminds me of my favorite VTuber. Hey so without further ado, here is my 1000% scientific, fully peer-reviewed thesis Shut the fuck up, God. on why Marin Kitagawa is quite possibly the best girl of our generation that may usher Earth into an era of prosperity that brings humanity into its second renaissance. And you know why you should be watching Dress Up Darling, because it's a bloody great show. But before that, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of today's episode, Call of Antia. Hey there. You're looking a little stressed right now, and if you are, maybe Call of Antia is the perfect stress relief that you need. This is a brand new Match 3 RPG game with beautiful music and animation setting a new benchmark for casual games. The thrilling Match 3 gameplay combines epic puzzle battles with magic and dragons, and for God's sakes, who doesn't love dragons? Yes, we got dragons for days. They're your secret weapons in battles and your strongest allies on your adventure to meet legendary figures from across its world. There are over 60 heroes to collect that you can level up and upgrade to using your arsenal. Right now you have the chance to summon a legendary 4 star hero for free, Morgan. Okay, I admit, I don't give pirate girls enough love, but that's about to change because sign me up captain, it looks like there's a new pirate queen in town. If you get bored, there are also tons of different modes from Alliance Wars, 1v1 Battle and Fallen Titans. And there are also tons of events constantly that give you free items. So, if you want to enter the world of Antia today, then you can click the link in the description or, more conveniently, you can just scan this nice little QR code to download the game now. And don't forget, you can also use promo code GIGUK for some freebie. Thank you to Call of Antia for sponsoring today's episode and and with that said, back to my dress up darling. There's been a genre that's been popping up recently that I like to call Best Girl the Anime. Series about a plain, typically average guy going into a story all about how their life got flipped turned upside down by the appearance of a single anime girl who feels like they were perfectly engineered to be the ultimate life form. A waifu. These shows dangle the discord girl you wish you had, complete with a charming, adorable dynamic with the main lead, baiting us and us weebs bite hook, line and sinker, giving us hope in the darkest of places. Cause if you think there's no chance of you finding a girl like this, just remember, no matter what kind of person you are, no matter how lonely you feel, never forget that there are approximately 4 billion girls alive in the world right now and you chose to fall in love with a fucking drawing. <laughs> I've never seen a woman. I think the first time I saw a show radiate the same kind of energy without the romance was with the outer worldly horror Lovecraftian nightmare creature Umaru-chan, proving that in the pursuit of greatness, science may have accidentally created cancer. But all of these past attempts have now been rendered mute as we have now found the absolute pinnacle of the genre in My Dress Up Darling. Wakana Gojo has a secret. He spends his days perfecting the art of making Hina dolls, a hobby he adopted from his grandfather. He keeps to himself about it because as a kid, one of his childhood friends found out and was like, Yo, did you just post cringe? No, no, this isn't cringe. Bro, this is cringe! An experience that taught him to keep his hobbies to himself and close himself off from the people around him completely. That is, until one day, a girl comes literally flying into his life. <laughs> D did it hurt? When, when you fell down from heaven? Yeah, it looked like her. She's confident, sociable, popular, but of course she too has a secret. She's a weeb. Great! Not only that, but she has a big passion in cosplaying. Anime characters, game characters, Iroga characters. She wants to cosplay them all, except just one problem. 
She sucks at making costumes. So when she finds out about Gojo's love for making Hina dolls, despite his fears, she finds his craft incredible and enlists his help to make the costumes of her dreams. And so begins this delightful rom-com between the unlikely couple as Gojo goes from making traditional Japanese dolls to anime costumes galore. See, if you're wondering why Dress Up Darling was one of the most popular new anime of the season, well, the answer's pretty obvious. A charismatic, hot girl who's into anime, games, and even hentai wants to cosplay and isn't afraid to be lewd? She's like my perfect anime girlfriend! My best girl's senses were tingling from just a single glance. It's almost like she was perfectly designed to take over the anime community, and that's exactly what she did. Screenshots, fan art, appreciation posts. Marin almost immediately took over my timeline and refused to leave, and you know what? When I see the internet collectively creaming their pants over the hottest new anime girl of the month, my knee-jerk reaction is the unstoppable urge to take the piss out of that girl because I'm what's normally referred to as a fucking asshole. So I went to do my dress up darling with all defenses up, an impenetrable waifu fortress that could not be broken no matter what. And it went a little something like this. Yeah, I mean, she's alright, but nothing so special so far. <laughs> nope. I can control this. <sighs> Like every top tier anime girl, their strength lies in the quality of their blush. And the first time I saw that beet red face turn around, I <laughs> so hard I thought my heart was about to go into cardiac arrest. But it was gonna take more than a red face to win me over, and Marin conquered my heart faster than the Mongols conquered Asia. Marin just radiates this charisma that commands every moment she's on screen. She's charming yet relatable, eccentric while being a grounded person. If she was born in the Roman times, wars would have been fought for her. We may very well be witnessing apotheosis in anime form. Here is a goddess living in the realm of girls. Gentlemen, we may have in fact found the original Sigma female. That's right, there's none of this. Oh, baby sis, it's not because I like you, but Barker. Here is a Sigma that fully embraces her true feelings, immediately accepts them, and pursues them. Where other anime girls take 10,000 years waiting for the ship to come, she's full on Michael Phelpsing herself towards the ship. She's lewd without being immodest, in an era which drove people to say, Silence, wench. I don't want to be horny. I just want to be happy. Marin says, Who decided you can't be horny and happy? Boo woo, please don't loot her. She's a precious little cinnamon bun. Pathetic. Here's a girl so headstrong, so strong-willed, she's determined to loot herself before any Rule 34 artist could. And that's because Marin Rule 34 Kitagawa gets it. She understands the struggle of man. For you see, you don't fap because it's easy. You fap because it's- Hardly any time passes in this anime without the animators fully showing their appreciation of Marin's assets all around. Alright, let me say it, this is a horny show and it looks fucking great. If Entai was art, then this is the Sistine fucking chapel of smut. And poor old Gojo here is just standing there casually displaying the willpower of a fucking Green Lantern candidate with the damn Mona Lisa of waifu standing in front of him. This may make you think that Dress Up Darling is just another fan service show with the newest hot waifu of the month and, well, that is... Absolutely true. But also missing a massive part of what makes this show so great. This may be a horny show, but it's an equally, if not more, wholesome show. I'm a sucker for stories about people pursuing or expressing their passions, and this show has that in spades. For anyone interested in cosplay, the show breaks down the process to the smallest detail someone like me would have never considered before. A lot of research has obviously been put into this, and the attention to detail shines through, but beyond this, it does such an amazing job in conveying the love behind the craft, and why people find such a delight from doing Doing it. I've never tried cosplaying, or had any drive to do so, but seeing the pure joy of these people being able to become the characters they so love and respect, I can't help but catch some of the joy being radiated from them, and it helps me understand cosplaying in a way I never had before. I think the exact moment I fell in love with this show was the first time a costume was completed. Due to a miscommunication and a complete lack of understanding with how long it takes to complete a costume, Marin unknowingly pressures Gojo into making a cosplay for a character she really wants to become in a ridiculously unreasonable timescale. He stresses himself beyond belief and pushes himself to complete burnout, but somehow, some way, he finds a way to push through and finishes it. And when Marin sees the final product and finds out everything he's been through, you see her acting like... 
a decent human being. She doesn't wave it off or have it divulge into a comedic moment, she fully realises the fuck up she's done, the amount of pressure she's put him through and gives a genuinely tear-filled apology most YouTubers can only dream of doing. There is real regret from a female lead, but Gojo being the guy that he is, accepts it and moves on. He can see how much she wants to become this character, how passionate about it she is, and if he can make her feel the happiness of achieving that, then it's all been worth it. So, after all that, they decide to try it on, and you can see that it's freaking perfect. Her glee and excitement oozes through. You can see the exact moment her passion becomes realised, and it's one of the most uplifting feelings I've felt from such a simple moment. And I think that's what truly makes the romance work in this series. As much as Marin steals the show, let's not pretend that Gojo isn't a fucking catch. He's timid and shy, but he's a genuinely earnest guy who pours his whole soul into his passions. He puts everything into fully bringing Marin's hobbies into fruition. He finds a sincere happiness in bringing joy to the people around him, but it's also in service for his own dreams of perfecting his craft with Hina dolls. He's an individual with his own goals and aspirations, and it's by being around Marin that helps him realise that he shouldn't be ashamed or closed off about his own passions. In some anime romances, you hope the main couple get together because the plot dictates that they would be happy together, so of course you got to cheer for them. But here you get the sense that the two are genuinely made for each other. This isn't a one-way street. They bring out the best in each other while helping to cover each other's worst sides. They both equally help help each other grow, and to me, that's the true sign of a great couple. Because lads, do you know what's better than witnessing a smile you want to protect? It's witnessing a smile that you helped earn. Gojo isn't the typical self-insert protagonist he may initially seem like on the surface, but I would be lying if I didn't see a part of my old self in him. If anyone's seen my You'll Grow Out of Anime video, you'll know I have an eerily similar story to Gojo from when I was a kid, involving a Pokemon pencil case and some girls who thought that no one my age should still be into Pokemon. And that experience stuck with me. Anime is my passion and has been for a very long time, but for a large portion of my life, I was ashamed to own up to it. When I was growing up, anime, gaming, and nerdy shit in general was looked down upon and laughed at, so I kept it to myself. I was a closet anime fan for the longest time, even when I was in uni making the good old Anime Zone reviews, not a single person around me knew that I'd even liked anime, let alone made YouTube videos about it. It was only when I grew older that I actually met people who accepted my passions, made friends who I could nerd out with, surrounded myself with people who accepted the real me, who helped me feel confident in being open and pursuing my passions, and now you can't fucking shut me up about topics I'm passionate in. And that, to me, is what makes Marin best girl. She isn't true waifu material because she's a sexy cosplay girl who's into anime and video games and likes all the same nerdy shit you like, but because she's down to earth chill, compassionate, and most importantly she's so unashamed in being the person she is. Someone who's completely upfront with her own feelings and passions. Someone who's not only honest to the people around her, but herself as well. Someone who doesn't put you down for the weird things you may like, but encourages you to accept it and embrace it, because she takes a genuine interest in the people around her. Such a force of positivity exudes an energy that is irresistibly addictive. It can give comfort to the people that need it most. It can bring the most closed off person out of their shell. Everyone deserves a Marin Kitagawa in their life, and I'm not talking about waifu material. It could be a girlfriend, boyfriend, best friend, family member, distant relative, someone who's able to bring out the best in you just by being around them. And that's why, to me, Marin is without a shadow of a doubt, my best girl of 2022. JK, it's just because she reminds me of Sydney. It's your girl!